we I walked into the room and the teacher just said, here's a situation, here's a scenario, act. And I was like, how do I do that? <laughs> I was working about two or three jobs at the same time and I saved up my money. I found the local acting school and I just paid for eight, as many classes as I could. I used all my wages and they went into my acting. Um, I just, honestly, my money, I barely had any. I just was like, I want to learn. I need to get myself out there. I need to train again. Um, I've had a long time where I've not performed and I just need to do something. So I went to charity shops and would buy plays, like secondhand plays, and would just read them. I'd learn monologues. What are you seeing? I have hundreds of plays in my bedroom, just stacked. And I would just read them. I didn't care what it was about. Just read it. I'd learn a character. I'd learn some lines. I'd do a monologue. And then I'd move on to the next one. You dropped out. Six months, uni. You dropped out. Why? And what was the madness? Meet Monica Bennett, a UK-based actress. Behind the grace of ballet and the magic of stage lights, Monica discovered her true passion, acting. From her early days with the Birmingham Royal Ballet to leading roles in indie films, she combines elegance with raw talent. Now, with her sights set on Hollywood and HBO, she shares how auditions, character preparation, and passion fuel her craft. Watch now to dive deeper. So hey everyone, I am Ajay Tambe, the host and producer of Create Your Your Starting Podcast. And today with me, I have a wonderful guest. She is an actress and she's from the UK. Important thing is she is uni dropout. So another one in the club again for acting and for auditions and for, you know, journey to become an artist. She decided she is going to drop out. Okay, that is one of the big things she has done at this moment. Importantly, she started dancing at the age of three. She entered into tap dance, into ballet. She trained, you know, uh, in, in, in proper academy in Birmingham. And, you know, she trained herself. Then she also trained herself as an actor. She did a lot of workshops, auditions, you know, trained herself through the process of being into play, joining uh, workshops, being under mentors. Same thing she did. So she is kind of professional at very young age. She is something that she is doing where she thinks, no, I have to do it professionally. She is maintaining the whole aura of herself as an artist. Like she wants to make sure that everything falls in places and I have to be good at every single thing. So today I have with you is Monica Bennett from UK. Welcome, welcome to the show, Monica. Hello, thank you so much for having me. So what's up? What's going on with you now? Um, actually, life is very busy at the moment. So obviously, it was the summer holidays for us. So I went away with my family a few times because it's quite a okay. quiet time for acting um, in the UK during kind of July and August. But September and October, they're really busy months. So I'm just going from audition to audition projects. And yeah, yeah just going for it. Wow, that sounds cool, you know. Uh, yeah, I heard this thing, you know, uh, this June, July are the months where there's not a lot of work, but uh, that is the part where you prepare, you know, on your craft, you prepare mm -hmm. for auditions, self-tapes, uh, a lot of mm -hmm. things are going on. Okay, uh, Monica, just tell me one thing. What's your schedule look like in 2024, you know, as an artist? What are the things that you follow uh, as an artist now in 2024? Um, so each day I try to kind of watch either an interview or a masterclass or something from an actor, director, casting director, agent, anyone yeah. really that I look up to. I try to do that mm -hmm. every single day because it keeps you motivated, it keeps you inspired and it keeps you constantly like going for it. Um, yeah. And then each week looks different. Obviously when you're a performer you can have a week where you are working seven days and then a week where you could be working one or no days so yeah, um when i'm not doing that i'm just picking up work where i can um but yeah working all the time <laughs> yeah i mean uh that is kind of a dilemma for an actor you know when there's too mm -hmm. much work you think like hey i work like hell you know it's it's uh like why are you guys not working we come into that ways where we see we see ourselves like like working like hell you know and there's a part where we are chilling like <laughs> like it, yeah. it's it's a part where there is no work and you are still confused like uh, and you go into that phase like what's going on with me i have no work and it, it's kind of a, a phase of and every actor goes through this you know uh this is mm -hmm. this is kind of a, a phase that every actor has to go through this you know working a lot and certain i guess this is the life of an actor you know or an artist like it is like this it's filled with work a lot of work and then it's filled with empty empty space you know mm -hmm. there's nothing there's it feels like there's no meaning 
uh, to live. It, it's mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Okay, uh, good yeah. to know that. Now, tell me, uh, before we jump on to your journey, you know, you started at three, the childhood story, that's going to be really uh, fun to know. But before you jumped into acting and now you are professionally training yourself, you're doing short films, you know, you are you're mm -hmm. becoming part of my projects, you know, and uh, you're doing a lot of things. We would like to know you in the childhood and the one who at three decided you know, I have to do this ballet dancing and tap dancing. What was going on with you then? Um, so when I was younger, so when I was about two years old on the TV, there was an anniversary for Swan Lake and mm -hmm. Sadler's Wells with the Royal Ballet. And I was two years old. I sat in front of the TV and I watched it. I didn't get up. I sat in that same position and I just watched it. And my parents said, we need to get her into dancing. And then as soon as I started dancing, um, there was old films like The Wizard of Oz and Norman Wisdom films that were on the TV, Breakfast at Tiffany's with Audrey Hepburn. And as such a young child, I would just watch them. I wouldn't be bored. I wouldn't be scared. Um, and I think then my parents kind of knew, okay, she really likes what she's watching. Yeah. Let's just get her to try it. And then I've done it ever since, really. Well, that's good to know, you know, uh, that phase of uh, curiosity, you know, getting stuck yes. in front of TV. And then your parents must be the one who took the good decision, you know, where they didn't put you on TV. They put you in front of TV and they thought like, hey, just let her have her fun and not interrupt. Yeah. Let's continue the work. <laughs> Uh, they yeah. did a good job of, you know, hey, she is watching something. Let's put her out in the world where she can enjoy the stuff that she's watching. And mm -hmm. tap dancing, ballet dancing, I guess, great, uh, great, the the way it shapes you as an artist. Uh, it's kind of a different way to, you know, uh, complete the body language of an artist uh, with the way the ballet dancing and uh, the mm -hmm. ballet dancing and tap dancing is. You were three, you joined the ballet dancing. So mm -hmm. how did you? school phase went like uh, you never entered into acting directly how that phase of uh, you continuing your journey as a dancer and then becoming a professional dancer when did that transition happen where you were in school part of school where you were completely enjoying the dance when did that transition happen and how that happened of you entering into acting yeah um so I obviously danced from such a young age and I think I always had such a love of being on stage. So my favorite part of dancing was always the performing part, the being in front of an audience. And okay. I would say my favorite thing with dancing was always having a character. I never really enjoyed just dancing. I thought it was fun, but I never really connected. I loved it when I had a character and we did a show and they gave me a part and I could go home and I could think, what was that character feeling? What's the story this character is telling? And so then I thought, okay, maybe this is a bit bigger than dancing. Maybe this is more, I really like connecting with things yeah. and telling stories. And mm. so then I started to watch more TV. I went to the theater more. Um, I did a few clubs kind of outside of school, outside of dancing, just for fun. Um, more like improvisation and right. some exams in acting. And then I really thought, okay, this is something I'm really enjoying. And I was quite nervous. Dancing always brought out my confidence. Um, mm -hmm. But always speaking, I was quite a nervous child. And then right. as soon as I was acting, I was reading a script or I was memorizing lines. I just had this confidence that came out of nowhere. And yeah, yeah I just loved it. Wow. I mean, like uh, the way you told me, the part where you used to and that is important part to notice here is the character that you're talking about. You always like the character and then you can go into the soul and dance properly. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. you always uh, like that part of dance. And that's that's the best mm -hmm. part, you know, because that is the way uh, actors would like to, uh, you know, study the character where they want to be that part and they go in and, you know, go in depth. So just curious here, how old were you when you were thinking like this? So... Um, I, mean, like, I would have said connecting to character 14 or 15 14, 14 or 15 okay. yeah I think I kind of knew when I was younger so about mm. nine or ten but uh -huh. again I had the dream I was like I want to be a ballerina that's what I want to do I saw it on the tv and then mm. slowly the more I was dancing the more I was like maybe I don't want to be a ballerina maybe it's just mm. I like telling the story what other job could mm. I do which my career could just be this, telling stories. 
guy, guy. So telling stories, you know, uh, the portraying the story of that character via dance was the way that you were fulfilling yourself as an artist. And I guess that's what pulled you uh, into acting. I guess uh, that's that's you in a way. So uh, tell me first time you entered into uh, acting room where, the, where people are performing uh, any play, any theater play, you know, uh, what was that like? What was the day one of you entering into acting, you know, preparation for you get lines and hey, see these lines and this is it. And you just have to do it and act. What was with you? Um, so the first, I think, club I ever did, we I walked into the room and the teacher just said, here's a situation, here's a scenario, act. And I was like, how do I do that? <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And they just said, just do it. Just do what your body is telling you. Do what your mind is telling you. Yeah. Use the other actors in the room. Act. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. I felt silly. I probably wasn't very good. Um, but I just really enjoyed it. And I thought, you know what? Everyone in this room is in the same situation. Mm -hmm. No one is better than someone else. Everyone has literally just been given this piece of information and you just have to run with it. And I think I quite liked it because there was high stakes. There was pressure, but also yeah. a lot of fun with it. So, yeah. <laughs> God, I, mean, I mean, this is the best part, you know, it puts you in the position where you are on your toes and you have to do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what puts you uh, in pressure and makes uh, and gets best out of you sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess uh, this is the part where uh, when, when the teacher told you to do something, I guess uh, you were good at reading the room. First of all, you read, okay, I guess <laughs> these guys are in the same way where I am. And I mean, that's, yeah. that's a relief for you. That's where you yeah. kind of cool yourself. And I guess second thing is you're used to do the auditions and the dancing. So you used to be in front of people and, you know, act and mm -hmm. perform yourself. I guess that might have been something that always will help you throughout these years because you have the, uh, you know, uh, the process of getting in front of people, presenting whatever you have. And I guess that's that's best thing that you have with you now. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, now we jump on to the part where you started after that you got into a play so which was the first play that you enrolled yourself cracked the audition and you know performed on the stage i would say my first play just acting without any dancing would have mm -hmm. been a showcase and we did um it was part of my old agency that i was with so my agent headed the showcase and it okay. was classical pieces so shakespeare and all sorts of period pieces, very period. traditional. Um, and we had people, um, members from the Royal Shakespeare Company come and watch, um, members of the public, family, friends. Um, but that was the first time in front of an audience where I wasn't dancing, it was just me acting with a cast wow. of people. Um, yeah, it, it was really good. I, I was definitely very nervous um, because when you take dance away, it's kind of that was my shield. That was my oh, little yeah. safety net. Um, yeah. But I really loved it. And I just had such a big adrenaline rush from it. And I thought, no, this is confirmed to me. I've made the right decision in focusing just in acting. Mm -hmm. And I want to see where it goes. So tell me, what was the name of the play first uh, to begin with my questions? So it was just called The Classical Showcase, starring lots of classical pieces. It was like an amalgamation of all different playwriters and pieces. We had monologues, duologues, um, short scenes, and they were all just compiled together. Um, so that was that. Um, and it was okay. under Bazan Talent Agency. So, yeah. Got it. So tell me now, uh, when when you got it, you, you know, you were approached to do this part and they decided to get you in, uh, how did you prepare? Because I guess there is a rawness in the first play and there is, uh, you know, where you, where you uh, develop yourself throughout the years and throughout the days you perform. So the rawness of you in the first play, how did you approach to the character in your first one? I personally just always the like... Line or what what was with you like you pre prepared professionally or you just mm -hmm. you know just read the lines and you know prepared that's it i just uh, memorized the line and that's my part what was it i i always like to research in whatever whatever character yeah. or role i'm doing whether that's a play that's known mm -hmm. like a shakespeare play there's obviously a lot of information about shakespeare through the internet through books so that's really good place to start However, if it's a play that's a brand new play or a brand new film, 
um, and there's not much information, I try to look at the themes that go on with my character that I'm playing and the other characters and kind of get a good gist of what's going on in whatever period it's set. I think as well, I always like to try to make a background story for my character because mm -hmm. the audience, we are the audience are introduced to a character from scene one, from the first, from the moment they step onto stage or the camera. However, mm -hmm. you've got to think if this was real life, that character's had a whole life before the audience even meet them. So to make mm -hmm. that character and performance as realistic as you can, I try to give myself a story. So I'm carrying on that story so it feels natural. And then I'll go into line learning. So just going over and over lines, making yeah. sure I know them so I could do them from any point. Um, the lines shouldn't be a worry, I think, when you're acting. Once you know them, you know them. And then yeah. you can just solely focus on your performance. I think mm -hmm. there's been times, maybe when I was younger, I was so stressed about knowing the lines. So yeah. my performance didn't look natural. It, didn't, it wasn't as good as probably what I could have made it. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's just learning and preparation. And lines yeah. are still something I struggle with. Um, but yeah, you've just got to practice, I think. I guess uh, that's what I was talking about, you know, the early days where you just get so nervous. Okay, I have to do this, yeah. I have to say lines, I have to be on that spot and I have to perform and then you have to respond to other characters. And there's a lot of things going on in a stage play at the same time. You are, you know, performing, mm. you have to listen, you have to observe, a lot of things you have to do. And I guess uh, that, that was the part that you saw yourself developing over the years where you now go in depth with the stories and the preparation, how you uh, deal with the craft and the graph of mm. particular characters. I guess uh, that really helps you out today. Okay. Mm, uh, okay. Right. And now we jumped on uh, the part of character preparation, but I'd like to know that you mentioned that Killing Eve and Jodie Comer's performance, performance shifted your perspective on acting. What about mm -hmm. that show when her character spoke to you and how did that inspire you? So you're saying uh, this is happening in lockdown, right? 2020. You were watching yes. movies. Okay. Yes. And you watched a movie. So so tell me, before lockdown, before 2020, you were completely into dancing professionally. Or ha were yes. you doing anything, plays or nothing? No. Um, I had done when I was about nine and ten years old. And then okay. I took a step back and was just dancing before lockdown. Sure. Got it. Got yeah. it. So, so uh, this switch that happened after watching this movie, tell us first of all what that movie was and what really, uh, because everyone has this moment. Of they decide and yes. that is and you know this was the movie so tell us first mm -hmm. of all what that movie was and what happened that really moved you and made you to hey i want to be this i want to be in this place i want to be in in whatever they are doing and i want to experience this and i want to be like this for the rest of my life what was that mm -hmm. um yeah so as i'm sure everyone else did during lockdown there was a lot of spare time so yeah. my family definitely I think our way of bonding um, was to sit down and to watch movies. And mm -hmm. I know on Netflix, there was quite a few really good movies that had come out. Um, I know during lockdown, we watched the British movie, The Gentleman. And that was kind of like um, a dark humor, black comedy, um, action packed movie. And that was different to anything I'd watched before. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And I thought the cast was brilliant. So then I started to watch more movies kind of along that line, uh, along those lines. And then I'd kind of got, I'd watched all the movies I wanted to watch. So I went on mm -hmm. to series. And mm -hmm. that's when I watched Killing Eve for the first time. And I hadn't watched it when it had come out. Um, but my parents loved it. So they said, give Killing Eve a go. I clicked on it. And I just fell in love with the show, with the storyline, the directing and the character performance. Um, I had only watched Jodie Comer in one other thing, um, but seeing her in this role mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just the way she took it was incredible. And I just literally said to my parents, I need to do something like that. And that was it. It just changed my whole kind of goals and ambitions. Um, so, yeah. Well, uh, and this tells me more uh, about your parents also you know that's interesting like you tell them and they discuss and it's it's kind of cool situation with you you know it, it's kind of friendly mm -hmm. situation tell me about your parents you know uh like oh, are they in acting are they doing separate jobs they're supporting you mm -hmm. like hey we know you and like if you think this is it then we are with you so how's mm -hmm. like what's your relation uh related to you know you taking decisions and How's your uh, thing with parents, you know, because they've been supporting you at the age of three. So tell me more about that. 
Yeah. Yeah, my parents are, on, I'm so lucky. They're amazing. They are so supportive. But we have such an open and creative household. So mm-hmm. I act and dance. My sister, she's a musician. Um, okay. So she songwrites, she plays the drums, um, and she cool. also, also does art. So as a female drummer, that's so empowering and inspiring. Yeah. Um, my mom, she used to act and dance when she was my age. Um, oh. Didn't take it on. Oh. Yes. Oh, and now I get take it. it as far, but she definitely wanted to. And she has said to me she might dip into it, um, mm-hmm. being a bit older now and being an adult. Um, and my dad, he um, has always been very creative. He's done art himself. He used to do yeah. gymnastics when he was younger. So he's the one that helped me get into dance because he loved his gymnastics. Oh. Um, but we, I think as a family, we always try to stay really in with the arts. We're always going to the cinema and the theatre um, rather than going out to a party or something. We'd much rather save our money wow. and spend it on theatre or cinema or just going to a museum or an art gallery we're very much Mm. creative and we really appreciate the creative world um so Mm -hmm. i think they've always appreciated it whether they're recommending me a book or a tv show or a film there's always conversation of creativity in the house which is really quite inspiring got it got it and i I guess this is brand new information to all the listeners she never told me about this fact (laughs) because this uh puts uh, you know everything into a different perspective because mom Mm -hmm. interacting and you know art father also into gymnastics and art which tells more about how she is and what she is today there is a reason behind that foundation Mm -hmm. of uh you know getting her at early age you know uh making that uh belief uh, more stronger inside her, putting her in the situations where she can grow herself. And I guess these are the things which really helps an artist uh, to build themselves and, you know, to take the decision and the support at the same time. You know, that this is uh, the one that was missing. You should have this whenever you uh, send someone the in, uh, information about you. So, you know, uh, because I guess this is the foundation. Your parents are the foundation where uh, they built uh, a kind of confidence where, yeah, you can take this decision and they are with you. And that's that's really important thing for an artist. Okay, good to know that. Say hello from me to your parents. Okay. <laughs> I will. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because, you know, our show is all about discovering the journey of an artist. And we figure mm. out what people were going to have interviewed a lot of actresses, you know, living on farm and, you know, just a small uh, place where they just used to read the books watch the films you know watch the films again and again and again and you know just just that part and they used to love singing now they became the big musicians and you know big artists and all so mm-hmm. so uh the, this journey of having a background or not having a background and what helps to them and what did not help them and how they overcome the situation and now they are in a position so to have uh, this support and parents like this is going to put you mm-hmm. in a level where you don't have to think about this uh you know so and it will help you in something else so that's the a big thing that we discover on the show so okay uh, okay okay i guess we covered that part now we jump on the part that this is really important you dropped out six months uni you dropped out why yes. and what was the madness what year was that was it after 2020 what was going on why did you take this decision because this is really uh, the toughest decision and i guess because i did it that's why i'm asking so yes. <laughs> uh, this is kind of you know where, where the moment you do it you feel everything is good the moment you go three months after that everything falls down for very large number of people and they are confused what mm-hmm. to do and they think like what if i go back and do this so the big call that you took here you need to talk about tell us more on that yeah well as i'm sure you know it's such a big decision um i went to university it would have been um 2022 to 2023 so from the september to the february time um and i went i wanted to study english literature and drama because Mm. in my head um i think it was the it's the normal um yeah as an artist the uk yeah i think I'd done performing arts school for four years. I'd auditioned for drama schools. I've got a few places, but I just didn't want to do that for another three years of doing the same thing. Um, So I thought maybe go to university, get a degree, um, do something more kind of academic because I really Mm -hmm. enjoy learning. I've always loved academia. 
Um, and I thought that could really be like a nice backup job for my acting. Um, yeah. Got there and did not like it at all. It just wasn't for me. <laughs> just, just all on it. Just all on it. You took all the thing. You decided and you used all your brains. You know what you can think as an artist can. You know do uh, his or her moves. What next? What next? And this is what you saw. This is what you saw in front of you. Okay, mm. I'm an artist and I'm taking a, a proper decision to put myself in a way that where I have a degree and I want to be in yeah. a place where it is all related to art. So you did yes. that. You took a degree. Yes. You took the decision of taking that degree. You went yeah. to uni. Everything was perfect. What happened? that even the subjects and whatever you study was them still you felt like this is not for me i felt so unfulfilled and not inspired at all i felt i had taken something which i love and i wanted to explore and i just had such like a burning passion to just get out there make yeah. my name tell people hi i'm monica i'm an actress i want to work i want to do the best i can and i just mm -hmm. felt like i was boxed in to a three-year degree where I could not explore. I could not put myself out there. I was just on a one track with every other person that was in my year group doing that degree. And mm. I just thought, I want to take control of my future, of my career. And I want, I want to learn on the job. I want to make mistakes. I want to excel my career. And I just felt leaving and doing it by myself and having amazing people around me and choosing what people I have around me um, because at the time, I definitely had a lot more negative people in my life. I wanted to take a cool. step out and really reflect on who am I? Who are the people I have around me? Because you need to have support when you're doing something yeah. like acting or performing. Yeah. You can't you can't get there without it. It's so hard. And like we touched on with rejection, you need that support. And then I think once you have that and you're okay in yourself and you know your goals, then you can skyrocket to that. Got it. And I guess uh, that's that's a part where you know this this mind of yours, where you mm. think where who is with you, who is not with you, what mm. you need around you. Uh, this particular thing of you taking decision and then deciding, okay, this is putting me in the cage, and I'm not getting to do anything. Where you spend your mm. life from the age of three performing out practically, and this is what sitting on a bench, sitting on a chair, and okay, yeah. that's what they are saying, and I have to write it, and I have to do this task, and. I am a dancer. I am an actor. I want to be. I want to perform because that's who were for like yes, ten, fifteen years, and suddenly yeah. you were told to sit there and listen to us. I guess that part where you thought, okay, this is not me. Even I thought this would work for me. This is not me, and this is this will never mm -hmm. work with me. I guess uh, mm -hmm. this part of you where you you know take a calculative risk is going to help you out throughout your lifetime. Uh, you know, as an actor, as an artist, as a dancer, as a professional in this field, this point of view, this mindset of yours is going to help you out, you know, uh, to build yourself in a very different way. And it's really good to know that you shared everything in detail. So, you know, people who are looking to drop out or people who listen to this or watch this can connect with you and the way, okay, I get it, I get it. And that's why, I, oh, I see, if, if this is what happens with me, then okay, uh, maybe I should do this, but it's not what I'm telling everyone to do. Uh, in case yeah. you don't love sitting, in <laughs> she she has, yeah. she has family, you know. She has a family where uh, everyone is with her. So maybe that's not that's not the case with you. So uh, make sure you think twice before doing it. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. She took the decision. Then she is uh, okay. So once you took the decision. Uh, what are the things that you did as an actor? Did you join a school? Did you join any workshop, any masterclass, you know, any dance classes? What did you do after that? Well, so I made the decision. And to be quite honest, um, I was really lucky. My parents, they thought for a long time I wasn't happy. They knew I probably wasn't myself. Um, I wasn't bubbly Monica that I normally am. I felt really uninspired and not creative. So I wasn't mm -hmm. really doing the things that I normally love to do. I wasn't writing. I wasn't performing as much. Um, so when yeah. I dropped out, I thought, okay, what do I want to do? So I got a few jobs working in a bar and a coffee shop, earning money to literally, I had no money. So I was working about two or three jobs at the same time. And I saved up my money. I found the local acting school and I just paid for eight, as many classes as I could. I used all my wages and they went into my acting. Um, I just 
honestly, my money, I barely had any. I just was like, I want to learn. I need to get myself out there. I need to train again. Um, I've had a long time where I've not performed and I just need to do something. So that was it. And then I started to meet friends. I started to meet directors, casting directors, teachers. And then you start to build your network. I use social media a lot. Um, that's such a good tool, I think, for any performer, mm, any yeah. creative. And it's it's a hard one because I always say social media can be very toxic. But you can be that positivity on social media. It doesn't have to be toxic. It can be a really yeah. useful tool. Um, so, yeah, I would just re I went to charity shops and would buy plays like secondhand plays and would just read them. I'd learn monologues. What are you saying? And secondhand plays? Yeah. You just buy them. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. I heard this oh, first time. I have hundreds of plays in my bedroom just stacked and I would just read them. I didn't care what it was about. Just read it. I'd learn a character. I'd learn some lines. I'd do a monologue and then I'd move on to the next one. Wow, that's that's really mm -hmm. interesting. You know, this this is your unique process of performing, and you know, not wasting time. I I mean, like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Go on, go on, continue, continue. Yeah, um, I read loads of books, um, because I think anything, anything is a really useful tool. The more you read, the more you know about the world, the more experiences yeah. you've been through. Um, I thought the more jobs I had, great. Mm -hmm. As much as I didn't want to do the jobs because it wasn't something yeah. I was interested in. Um, I wanted to use them for experience. I was meeting so many customers or so many people would come into a shop and I would make sure I had a conversation and ask them about what they do, what was their job, because I thought if I ever had to place a character like that, I would know how they were feeling on a day, I would know their life experiences, and I could really connect. So I thought the more people I met, I would just go for it. I'd meet and say yes to having a coffee with anyone just to learn more about the world. Well, I mean, like this is the next level that you have unlocked after dropping out. I mean, that puts you in the place mm -hmm. where you are completely on your own thinking what to do now. Because once you're, you're when when you're in uni, you you always think there's someone taking care of me. You know, uh, there's yeah. someone like there will be a job, there will be you know uh, that's scheduled all the time is scheduled for me by these guys, and I have to perform on mm -hmm. their time. And here you are somewhere, you know, you have to decide what is your next hour going to be invested in. Yeah. You know, what what time are you going to spend on uh, for the next uh, three months, four months, five months? You know, uh, that's how, and, and it's it's beautiful. It's it's beautiful. This is the first time I've heard. And you have, you, you should have this in your bio. You should write something out, you know, because uh, this is interesting to know. Uh, you did all this, this like, you know, collecting plays. It, it's like pro artists, you know, uh, collecting plays then talking to people this is uh, this is strange for me you know talking to people mm. and asking them about hey tell me about this this is the exercise that it's given to uh, an artist when they are in a production or you know they're training so i guess uh, it's it's beautiful to know I, i guess this clip is going to be the best one where you shared everything <laughs> about in, in a very unique way you know um, that that's the beauty of this show you know every artist has their own unique story and it it looks really beautiful when it gets opened up on this podcast and then reaches out to the artists who are looking to listen cool uh yeah, yeah and, and and i guess you took a lot of time spent on acting and you you completely stopped dancing then like uh were you dancing or it was off um i took a break from dancing i definitely took a break mm -hmm. because i felt i've done it the whole of my life um I didn't feel like there was anything more I wanted oh. to achieve with just dancing um, wow. because I've done so many amazing shows. I've met, worked with so many amazing people. And mm -hmm. for me, the love had kind of come out of it. I didn't feel that drive or that passion where every single morning I woke up and thought, I want to dance. Whereas with acting, that's exactly, I feel it every single day. I want to perform. I want to act. But now I would really love to do a role in the future where I play a dancer, so I'm acting mm, as a dancer. I think that would be you. really, yeah. So I do go to classes each week. I train. Yeah. I I'm in the gym five six times a week, and I'm training hard and um, to make sure I'm physically fit. So if I ever mm. needed to step into a dance role, I could do it. Um, okay. It would be hard, but I think I could still pull it off. But yeah, yeah I definitely cool. wanted to take a step back. I think. Yeah, but I think that's a uh, you know plus for you. It it's kind of a skill, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a uh, if there is a role about dancers, and yeah. portraying lifestyle of dancers or something related to you know which involves dance, that's a plus for you. I mean, you've been doing this, and then getting better at acting. It's it's mm -hmm. best combo. 
it's the best combo to have dancing and acting uh, involved so it can unlock different roles for you you know which yeah. you thought okay this happened and that would be the thing with you okay uh, yeah. so we will focus on your preparation for auditions okay so this is the part where we mm-hmm. discuss all about audition okay what's the most important thing you focus on when preparing for an audition when when you're in the room uh, you go for audition they give you a script and hey they say okay this is the part this is what it is and you have 15 minutes now perform what do you do i think there's a few things to try to think about firstly going with your instincts and doing what feels right to you not thinking what does the director want or what do the people on the audition panel want because they want you to succeed i think so many actors and performers going to go into an audition i've done the same and you go in and you think oh my gosh they're looking for mistakes they're looking for me to mess up they're not their job they want to find the right person for that role so they're rooting for you I think when you have it in your head that they're rooting for you and they want you to perform well, it kind of makes you relax a lot more and you want to feel relaxed in in an audition. Um, You want to feel really connected to your body. I always try to just shake my body out so I'm not tense or nervous um, Mm -hmm. and I just feel really relaxed. And also, like I've touched on before, knowing your lines, like the back of your hand, hand, you know, you need to know them um, so you're not worrying about them. The only thing you should be worrying about is getting there on time being professional and the acting and the art should do the talking for you, I think. So what's your prep for that particular moment? What do you do? Is there any other thing like exercises, your voice or eyes, your expressions? Is there anything that you practice out in between those, that time? I definitely warm my voice up, whether that's just a few um, running of lines, whether that's just humming, just to get obviously your vocal cords in mm. order. Um, I'll always glance over my lines quickly just so I definitely know them. And I will go through my lines about three or four times before stepping into the room, um, just so I know I know them. Um, and then I also will always, when I'm acting, I like you said, I focus on my eyes because eyes are such a good way of telling the story. You don't mm. even have to be saying any speech and you are acting and moving an audience because of what you do with your eyes and your facial expressions. So again, I will always practice what I'm doing between lines. What's my character thinking? I'll think like my character because then my face is going to do what my character would naturally do. Got it. And I guess uh, this is the best part where you, this is the moment where you should put all your energy in, you know, uh, in in that particular moment where everything that you prepared for in the workshops, you know, taking classes, taking courses, being online, reading Mm -hmm. books, you know, doing masterclass. But this 15, 20 minutes that you get is where you put all the attention in, you know, everything is what you get. And then it's a part where if they're looking for you, then it's you. But it's also part where maybe they're not looking for you. Maybe it's mm-hmm. not for you. Maybe they're looking mm-hmm. for someone who does not look like you or does not sound like you. Maybe that is the part. So the part comes here is rejections. You know, yeah. you go with all the hope of, hey, I think I nailed that. And then you get a call, hey, sorry mm-hmm. to inform, but you are not selected for this particular part. How do you deal with that? I think it's really hard. Um, It is really hard. And I think unless you are a performer you mm-hmm. will never probably know the feeling of it you can you can get rejected from a job interview or from yeah. I don't know um sc- a school or a university you want to go to and it's hard it's horrible but I think when you're constantly being rejected week on and week out it is such a hard thing and you really yeah. do have to have thick skin um I struggled it struggled with it for a long time because I was like why why is it not me when's it my time but I changed my mindset completely. Um, I tell myself, if I'm not right for a role, I want mm-hmm. to be rejected, which sounds really silly and negative, but I do not want to step on a stage or um, be filmed and put in the public eye if I'm not doing a good job. Because if I'm right for a role, I can give it everything. However, if I'm not yeah. suited to something, somebody else could do that job 10 times better than me. And I would much rather them have that opportunity, smash it, be a star, than me really struggle to do it and not show my best performance. So I think when you look at it like that, that definitely really, really helps. Um, Yeah. Got it, got it. And I guess you should have this kind of mentality, you know, where you are very clear, okay, you may get rejected and it's it's Mm -hmm. not in your 
hand and you cannot control mm. the part which which is not in in your border not in your area to control of and i guess uh, that should be the mindset and that it it's not something that is inbuilt with every artist this is something that is that should be you know chipped in you know should be uh, processed and in uh, put then put that in in their head you know so they can mm. put that as exercise which will help them mm. to move on faster and you know just let, let's go mm. for the next let's go for the next let's see what didn't uh, happen with me in this time and we'll focus on the next to make better i guess this kind of attitude really helps and good to know about how you approached this okay so uh, okay what what's the biggest lesson you've learned from audition experiences so far is there i mean i'm talking about uh, what did you learn from an incident which is still with you okay this happened and no i don't want to make it happen again is there any kind of experience um i would probably say more to do with um self tapes because that's mm -hmm. such a big part of the industry now i think especially since covid and lockdown um a lot of the industry works via a call or via a tape and mm. I think I definitely um, have done some tapes where they probably haven't been the best or I've asked for advice on maybe why I didn't get the role. And um, I think a lot of it is being more naturalistic and going with your gut with a character. And like I said before, don't think of what the director wants. What do you want? What do you want to give the character? And not being afraid to do something a bit different or push the boundaries out a little bit or take a risk because I think it's all about risk taking and a lot of the time it will pay off if you've got the guts to do it. Yeah, yeah and that's true. You know, it, it's all about taking the risk uh, when it's mm -hmm. needed. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a call that you have to take at the right moment where yeah. it is needed and you have to take that call in or out. And I guess that that's the thing that is really important. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, now we focus on you preparing for the character character mm -hmm. preparation by monica bennett how she prepares for a character uh till now through the experience that you've got over the years you know reading books uh talking to people meeting people at the coffee shops you know uh, talking to them hey stranger tell me your story <laughs> what's with you what's wrong with you tell me i want to know more i, I mean you've done a lot mm -hmm. of this you paid for acting classes as much as you can yeah. from, you know from the things that you did throughout this experiences of you buying you know secondhand plays reading it preparing it combining all these experiences how what's the first thing you do when you prepare for a character when you get the character now in 2024 what's the thing that you do um i will always read the script probably about two or three times i think the first time i try to read it as if i'm reading the book as if it's mm -hmm. something i picked up from the bookshop and i can't wait to read it so I'll read it from an audience perspective. Second time, I'll read it from my character perspective. Um, and I'll think, okay, this is my character. What are, what's their personality? And then probably the third, fourth time, I will write notes. Um, a lot of it is in stage directions. So I'm thinking, what's my character's body language? What are their connections with other characters? And then, like I touched on earlier, I start to build a story up for that character. I, I feel like actors, a lot of the time, we're, um, we're like detectives. You're picking um, pieces of information and not all of the info is going to be in my lines. I look at the other characters' lines and I'll kind of build this persona of what my character is. And also I'll add little bits of spice of what I want it to be, what my character to be as well. And what can I add? Um, and then I'll start to build a story. I'll do my research. So I'll look at where the um, story is set the location and I will then start to build and compile all this information together and then I can start adding that to my lines and to my performance. Well wow, that's good that's good to know you know you really mm -hmm. go in depth for preparing for a character mm -hmm. I guess and yeah and that's good process and it's going to develop into more better version you know the way we upgrade app applications in your mobile every two mm -hmm. three months I guess this this whole thing that's inbuilt you, you it's going to upgrade every time you approach for any character or a projects that you do and it's it's good to know uh, okay and now here's the thing i guess you answered this like getting into mindset of okay 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 here's a different one try to answer this like uh, you know a character yeah. which you think okay he or uh, she okay she is like you you know she looks like you and i know her but when you get a character which is completely opposite of who you are you know completely different Okay, she may be, if, if you are 
uh, you know, happy, bubbly person, and she's completely into trauma. She's completely lost. Mm-hmm. So once you get this contrast, how do you approach? What is the exercise? What's your mindset uh, prep for this? Um, I actually prefer uh, playing characters that are completely opposite to me as a person because I find the process a lot more fun. And the performance, I don't know why. I just feel like I can make it more natural. I don't feel like I'm second guessing myself because it's not me. It's almost this character. I can fully immerse myself into them. I think process wise, I try to take myself away from myself. And I am that character when we're rehearsing, when we're, you know, doing the um, research, I'm that character. And it's really nice because you can step away from it. And it's like back to Monica. Um, which you can't really do if you're playing a character very like yourself. I find it really hard to come away from it or give it a different kind of um, direction because it is so relatable. Um, Mm -hmm. But with that character, whether it's something a little bit darker or, I don't know, like you said, adding maybe more trauma um, to a storyline. That that was an example. Yes, of course. Or um, even if you're playing a well-known person, like a biopic or something, which is something I'd love to do in the future, um, mm-hmm. I think the research will really carry it um, and knowing what the character is, the, the character's values. And I always, I think, just knowing what is the driver for the character? What does the character want throughout the play or the program or the film? What are the goals? What are the intentions? What's the relationships? Um, and also being, almost treating that character as a friend, like intro- introducing yourself to that character and really getting to know them. Because the more you know about that character, I think the easier it is to play. Um, so yeah, that's probably the way I would go about it. Got it, got it. And and there's if if the character is completely contrast, it's kind of challenge, and it's challenge to get mm-hmm. out too. You know, mm-hmm. it's challenge to get in, mm-hmm. and there is a challenge to get out of the character and go back to Monica. Yes. Uh, it, it's yes. it's it, it's like it takes a lot of baths, showers, you know, to get that character out because it stays mm-hmm. with you if it's that. Uh, traumatized if it that's dark if, if, if it is that dark it stays with you it comes back with you home you know and it, it is with your appearances and the way you approach to people so i guess uh it's it's challenging the both ways going in going out i guess that's a, a challenge overall uh, if, if if it is a contrast character okay uh that's good to know uh, and now i'd like to know do you like improv or you like sticking to the script uh, depending on the situation, but what's your take when you're on set performing? Uh, do you go for improv or you, you know, I have to stick to the character, you know, that's you. What, what, what's with you? What do you prefer? Um, I like improv, I think, in certain circumstances. So, mm-hmm. for example, I, I love following the script. I like knowing my okay. lines. I like doing it. But I think when the script isn't, it isn't vibing and maybe it's just you in a scene or it's you and another mm-hmm. character and you're really trying to just get a relationship across um, mm-hmm. and you want it to be as real as possible, especially yeah. in um, screen. Sometimes you just wouldn't say what the line is as a person. Yeah. It just doesn't come across natural at yeah. all. It comes across really wooden, really stiff. So yeah. when a director says, guys, improv, I love it because it just okay. – elevates a scene it might look really bad but it gives you the energy to maybe try the script again or try something a little bit new and it just I feel like it provides you with so many more ideas um and it just gives you that naturalism which I think every actor wants on screen um and it gives you a bit of creative freedom and I think it gets you more connected with your character that you're playing yeah, yeah. It, it opens, it connects with your, uh, you know, the character is now more connected with mm. you. You know how he, uh, he, she feels, you know, you know that character, what that character is feeling and you get whole thing. Okay, uh, now I know what she or she can see at that point. Mm. Okay, how she can react to that particular situation. Yeah. And that's wonderful. But don't try to mess up with other ca- characters, you know, other actors, because they might not be ready. And they think, hey, yes. just <laughs> let me onto my lines it's hard for me even to prepare and you're coming up with something new okay but i guess that's that, that's a part of improv too you know uh, when when mm-hmm. other artists is getting lost in the practical situation on stage maybe the improv is always there to help you out you know to get you back to that part where you yeah. missed your part missed your cue but now you can you know adjust that part and that's where yeah. i guess it helps okay cool uh now we jump on to the part where we discuss you played uh, 
the uh, production plays that you open in you know a uh, contemporary and period dramas now the genres are completely different okay uh, mm -hmm. so playing when what's the name when when lim fairfax gwenlin fairfax i still am not able to but but gwenlin i guess right <laughs> gwenlin fairfax yes. in the importance of being earnest how did you approach performing in a period drama and how does it differ from working on more modern pieces so the point here is of discussion uh, other than the character's name is uh, you prepare from two different genres you know there's contemporary and yes. there's period drama you're preparing and now throughout the interview the last half hour i came to know how deep you go for character and what kind of prep that you did to you know just getting a role or you know learning more about it you're the curious curious one you know where you want to know everything so when you approach mm -hmm. for this genres what's your mindset how you prepare for this and how you you know more than preparation tell me about the separation about hey, this is contemporary this is uh, you know period drama this is the phase and the time zone at the point we are doing it so how do you differentiate yourself and do you follow some steps so this is in contemporary and this is in period what's your process i think obviously there is such a big difference so period drama you have the language to be considering um, and I think a lot of people that watch period dramas, they really know the era that it's set in. So they know if you make a mistake, whether that's like you're in theatre or yeah. you're um, or you're like on a um, on a screen doing a period drama. People know. So you've got to be very on it with the language and the accents as well. That is probably the biggest difference I found between doing a modern contemporary drama to a period drama. Um, but then I also much prefer it because you are immersing yourself into a completely different world. Um, I've obviously never lived through the periods that I'm acting in, but it's yeah. really fun because you really get to step into a brand new world and um, like meet new characters and meet new rules and regulations that the character would have had to abide to. Um, mm -hmm. And I think as well, just really knowing what period you're in. There's so many like years and uh, centuries and periods, mm -hmm. which there's so many period dramas based on. So really knowing kind of that period. And um, yeah. that's what I definitely did going into the role personally. So do you do you visit back to the plays, the old plays and you read mm -hmm. them? Or you do go back yeah. and watch those movies? What do you do? Or do you do both? I do a bit of, a bit of both. I think it's okay. nice to watch. Um, and kind of see how other actors have done it because you, mm -hmm. there's always room for learning. I think I, when you're just reading, you're just thinking of yourself and what would I do? However, when you're watching more things, more art, you get yeah. more of a glimpse of, oh, that's a good idea or maybe I wouldn't do it like that, but next time I would do it like that. Um, it just gives you more ideas and more creativity, which is always a good thing. Got it, got it. And I guess uh, this is good to know, you know, where you got your... Uh, pot ready with period trauma and then with contemporary and you know which one to choose and you pick up that and you go in for okay this is the thing that i need to do for this particular part and it's good to know the differentiation and basic process yeah. of how it should work got it uh mm -hmm. now what's this question okay tell me throughout this projects that you did till now uh any rewarding or life-changing experience? Not life-changing, I can say, but something that, you know, dear God, this is something I unlocked today. You know, this is something mm -hmm. that, uh, wow, I think now I unlocked it, okay? This is where you, mm -hmm. wow, I guess this is the part where I was really stuck at this moment, but now this particular phase or this particular moment or this particular, you know, project, cleared that whole thing for me was that like like things like that this happened with you did mm. oh my gosh absolutely i think the past two projects that i've done um the the importance of being earnest which was theater and mm -hmm. then friday at 10 which was a short film both it's two true. very different but two things two genres and areas i really want to go down into more bigger yeah. projects but in the importance of being earnest that was really important to me because i hadn't had an opportunity for a good few months and i was really nervous stepping back onto the stage and doing a period drama the drama it was a three-hour play so there's a lot of lines to learn it's yeah. a lot to wrap your head around and we didn't have that much rehearsal time um the main character had actually dropped out so the director had asked me to step in um so 
that was definitely a challenge, but I really enjoyed it. And then the other main characters in the cast that I worked with were brilliant mm. and were really inspiring. So the minute I came off that stage, I thought, no, I definitely want to do something like that again, perhaps right. similar or on a bigger scale. Um, and then the short film that I've just filmed, um, Friday at 10, that was so eye-opening because it was the fa- my first time being on a set like that. I've never really mm-hmm. done something like that on a bigger scale. Um, yeah. And I just made so many connections with director, uh, producers, cameramen, yeah. uh, camera women, and just really, really felt connected to the crew and felt like mm. I was really making good connections and I definitely learned a lot. I was learning more about producing. And again, that's something I would like to do in the future. Um, so yeah, both both projects have really inspired me and given me that push to just keep on going. Got it, got it. And I guess, you know, uh, this is, it's all about networking at the same time, where yes. it, it, it's kind of putting people uh, in the places where, you know, if there's anything, you can help each other at the time when it's needed. And it, it, it's that part, I guess that's new. And to conclude this whole thing it's it's brilliant that you kind of figuring out at this moment okay this is where it should be and this is where it should be and okay this is the next step and the next step okay now this is solved you're kind of finding your path through the days that you're traveling so i guess and things are unlocking for you every day or every new projects that you're doing it and uh, that's how your journey is going at this moment so uh monica what i've learned from you and what i got the information from you it's completely different it's like on the both ends the morning that sent me her bio and her info is like <laughs> oh god I, I thought like okay i guess she's just starting out you know she has done a few projects and to everyone the quick info about how we got in here is it's it's all about the last moment call for our series the dark alley which is going to release in september i don't know when this is going to release but it's going to release in september and she just messaged hey i don't know it's late but i'm just submitting this is my this is my link and i was interviewing a lot of other actresses at that point where we are trying to figure out and i just get a map i told her hey slots are closed up if you're really interested send me something and we can continue afterwards and then we scheduled a call and the next day i guess we kind of booked in and it was wonderful after that we got connected and that's how i came to know about her and now she sent me the info where where you sent me the bio it's completely like two ends of that okay the one i know now after an hour of talking to you is someone who is really passionate from the age of 3 uh good blessed with good parents first of all but after that once you took out yourself in in the real market you know uh, on field where you were performing that's where the real character appears you jumped out you dropped out of the unit that actually put pulled out the version 2.0 of yourself you know the one who is working the one who is uh, you know uh, paying for her class is the one who is talking to people strangers just to know that hey if i get a character like this in coming future i have the data ready with me i have the information ready with me i have the traits ready with me uh, you bought the old place this is the bizarre thing that i'm hearing that you someone who is in 2020 plus and is oh, buying some old place someone like you is is kind of you know uh, people and artists who are just start, starting out should learn this part of what a hunger an artist looks like what a hungry artist looks like what uh, how eager and how hungry she is to learn about acting to learn uh, and make her better word you know make the best version out of this whatever she is at this moment and consistently working on yourself i guess that's you you like to improve yourself every single time you like to make sure that whatever i am today now in at this moment on the 10th of september i should be the most best version of me in coming 6 months 7 months 8 months i should have a lot of projects with me at this time and i guess the mentality and the mindset that you have for characters for preparation is really going to help you out as an actress as someone who is performing in dance combination of that and i guess that's what tells more about you as an artist your journey is it's completely different you should type more of what you do you know you should have a, a bio <laughs> ready with you this is this is something every artist should learn from your journey and learn from you mm. okay what 
and hunger in artists, you know, that's the best word I can place at this moment. You are mm-hmm. hungry. You are you want that to happen. You're that eager. Okay, I just want to lock this down. I have to make it happen. I have to let's see what are the steps I can pull out so I can make it work and I can make it possible for me at this moment. And that's what uh, puts you in the best part as an artist. Uh, and it's it's really uh, really interesting, new, and something that wow. What I can say is uh, an artist should be like this, should be hungry like this, should prepare something like this. Mm-hmm. And it's it's great to know you, Monica. Uh, it, it's something that uh, now once I know you and you having a lot of this experiences of talking to people, doing all these things, what advice you'd like to give to the artists who are just starting out, are in the same place as you are and who are just getting started and wanting to know the things, but not in the zone where you are. You know, what advice Mm -hmm. you as an artist in 2024 would like to give to the fellow artists? I would say learn, learn everything and anything you can, whether that's life experience, whether that's going onto YouTube and uh, clicking a video of how can I do an accent or watching actors round tables or watching Hollywood blockbusters. Learn as much as you can. Go to class, go out, sit in your park and look at all the different people around you and just learn learn about everything and everyone. I think the more knowledge you have in your head, the more you can use that in your acting. And don't be afraid to reach out, email directors or email an agent and ask for advice. Even if you don't want to be represented by them, ask them, what advice could you give to me? It's all about networking, like you said earlier, and knowing people. And I think you've just got to keep going. Do something, a little thing each day that you know is going to to contribute to your career. And you will yeah. honestly see so much improvement and growth, I promise. Great. And yeah, she's promising that. She's a, yeah. <laughs> promise. <laughs> so yeah. So if it doesn't work, you contact her. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, okay. So, uh, here's a part. Uh, thank you so much for, for your wonderful advice to all the artists and to all the fellow artists. Now, uh, tell me, uh, so to, this is an interesting part. Uh, if you want to connect with Monica, if you want to connect with her regarding work, all the information about her social media, her work email, her spotlight will be mentioned in the link of this description of this episode, what we are doing at this moment. Mm-hmm. So make sure you check that, uh, everything related to, in order to approach of her work, you know, connect with her. Uh, discuss with her future opportunities whatever everything will be there in the description of the episode so make sure you go and check out now and you can follow her uh, to the social handles that she has related to acting so whatever it is if you want to connect with monica bennett everything the information related to her is in the description of this particular episode so uh, make sure you jo- join connect with her uh, and yeah that's it that was the plug that i was uh, looking to put in so uh, i guess uh, we got your advice it was wonderful and now we jump on to the rapid fire okay uh, mm-hmm. rapid fire we term it as a rapid fire but you can take your time so okay <laughs> in case you can't remember anything but i guess these are the simple questions it's, it will not take much okay. of your time uh knowing about you okay rapid fire questions favorite movie growing up mama mia okay um uh, i heard this for first time okay uh dancing or acting Ah, acting. that's now that. Okay. 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 Good. Dream role. Um, a lead female in a period TV drama. Mm. I also heard about you going into HBO and in Hollywood. We'll jump on to that. Uh, but best part of auditioning? Meeting new people. Biggest challenge in acting? Um, staying motivated and believing in yourself. Comedy or drama? Which do drama. you enjoy? Drama. Okay. Period drama or modern drama? Period drama. Favorite actress? Jodie Comer. Say again, I didn't hear. Jodie Comer. Okay, it was the same, I guess. Okay, uh, stage or screen? Or screen. Mm, oh, screen. Okay, okay. Okay, good. Uh, dream acting destination, Hollywood or London's West End? Hollywood. Okay, Hollywood. Yeah, we go on 
Okay, okay. Uh, uh, the way you're going for it, the way your attitude is, you are going to reach the places where it's not just Hollywood now at this moment. It's all about OTTs and, you know, the big production houses. So the way you're approaching it, yeah, you will easily land uh, in HBO, in Peacock, in Hulu, whatever you think is best for you. But yep, yep, yep. W what's, your, what's your last take on talking about you landing in Hollywood and HBO series? What was that in your mind? um i just it's my biggest goal i watched hbo for such a long time i love so many of their shows mm -hmm. so that for me is my biggest dream my biggest goal um mm -hmm. i've got loads of other goals um but that for me would that would be that i have made it moment so i'm gonna yeah. keep keep pushing towards it i think Got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for uh, signing up uh, for our series, The Dark Alley, which is, by the way, now streaming. So you can go and check out her episode uh, in The Dark Alley, her performance in The Dark Alley. It's an audio series, Crime Thriller Mystery. Uh, it's a five episode series. It's now streaming. So make sure you go and catch Monica Bennett in The Dark Alley uh, on Creative Audio Starting Podcast. It's on Spotify and it's on Pippi Plus platforms easily you can find the link down in the description so you can go and check that on our website download it and yep that's it uh, okay thank you so much for being on the show and we connected last moment of the series but it was great knowing you i didn't know we would end up one hour 15 minutes totally. <laughs> i thought this was a 30 minutes interview and, and that's it uh, because the way i came to know about you okay i think she starts and she ends within 15 minutes i guess that's it but it's 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 really the good energy and God is with us that we kind of developed something really beautiful throughout this uh, for 75 minutes and it was really amazing. Thank you so much for being on this show. Thank you for telling the real the, the story that every artist is looking to hear. People are going, get going to ex, you know uh, inspire from you whatever that you did before getting in and after dropping out. So that part is really what everyone would love to know. Okay, I can they can just copy that and be the best version of themselves. It's it's really inspiring to know that. Uh, I guess this was it, everyone. I am Ajay Tambe, the host and producer of Greet Your Ears Darting Podcast. And now I'm signing off. <laughs>